Hello and welcome. I'm so glad you're here. This is Jennifer McGuire. I'm really excited about today's video because it is a fun way to combine different products creatively. You can use stamps, dies, embossing folders, stencils, and more. This is a variation of an eclipse technique, which is where you have a die cut popped up so you can kind of see the little white around it. But what's really cool about it is the different ways you can combine products for different looks. Let's get started with this example. For this card and a couple others in this video, I'll be using the new Gina K Designs Beautiful Butterflies 3. I love the patterns on these butterflies, and I think it's really clever that you can stamp sentiments for the antenna. If you look closely, you'll see those. There are lots of little flowers included also. There is a coordinating die set that cuts out those flowers and such, but what's really brilliant is the butterflies in this stamp set work with an older beautiful butterfly die set that Gina came out with. This die set actually cuts out three different butterfly stamp sets. So if you have the die set, it works with all three sets. I hope more companies do this. It's a great way to save. Here is um, one of the other butterfly stamp sets. I've used that before in a video. I'll link to it up here in the top right. And here is the other one. I've used that also. I'll link to it in the top right. So if you're a butterfly fan like me, this is something worth checking out. Okay, so I'll be using that first one that I showed you. I have my Misty stamping tool here. Any stamping tool would work or an acrylic block. I have a sticky mat in there. That's the Brutus Monroe stick and stamp. It just helps to hold the cardstock in place, but you could use temporary adhesive or tape. I am, have a piece of white cardstock there that is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And I'm taking the dies for the butterflies I want to use to kind of plan my positioning. It's easy to see the shape of these butterflies by looking at the die over putting down the clear stamps, which are kind of hard to see. Once I'm happy with the position, I'll take the clear stamp and just lay it right on top for all three of these butterflies. I'm trying to cover as much as the front as I can. Once I'm happy with the placement, I'll close the door on my stamping tool to grab those stamps and I can move the dies out of the way. This is now set up and ready for when we come back to stamping. I just wanted to have my plan before I got going. We'll stamp with this in a few minutes. But I first wanted to add that bold color to our background. So I have that piece of white cardstock that is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And I'm going to apply onto it a bold amount of color. I really want bold for these, but you could go soft if you prefer. I'm using Gina K Designs ink mostly here. It's a dye ink with beautiful color palette, but you could use absolutely any inks you want to. I am putting the colors of each ink on the screen in case you're interested. Now, when you are blending backgrounds, I always say this, make sure you overlap your colors significantly. The more you overlap, the better blending you will get. In fact, you'll see I'll go back and add even more pink over that coral color. Now here I wanted to try a new Hero Arts ink. Don't be afraid to mix your different inks from different companies. Companies are, work really well together, so no reason their ink shouldn't too. So I threw in the Passion Flower from Hero Arts, and I just felt that all blended together nicely. Okay, once I'm done, I'm gonna heat set this. Make sure you either heat set it or let it dry for some time. You wanna test and make sure it's completely dry by pouring some embossing powder on it. If the embossing powder falls off, you're good to go. All right, now I'm placing that back into my Misty on that center area of the stick and stamp mat where I had it before when it was white. And I use my anti-static powder tool. It's important to do that. Then we will stamp these butterflies with Versamark ink. This is a clear sticky ink. You won't really see the images, but the ink will be there. Now my Versamark's getting a little dry and I'm a little too lazy to re-ink it. So what I'm gonna do is stamp it again. Now sometimes when you stamp solid images and you've stamped onto a background that you've used an anti-static powder tool, what I like to do is stamp, then clean my stamp, then stamp again. Because if your stamp picks up some of that powder, you don't want to transfer that to your ink pad. I don't always do this, but when I remember, or I'm doing a lot of heat embossing like here, I will do that step. Okay, so now I have my stamped Versamark butterflies, and I will sprinkle on my white embossing powder. Notice that it is staying nice and crisp because I made sure that my ink was dry on the background, and I used that anti-static powder tool. 
After I've covered it with white embossing powder, we'll heat set it and we have these bold white images on the colorful background. By the way, if you wanted to, you could have white heat embossed first and then added the color on top, totally up to you. All right, now I'm using those coordinating dies to cut out each of these butterflies. I'll run it through my die cut machine and I'm gonna keep all of the pieces here, the background and the butterflies. We're gonna put this back together in a moment. But first, let's start with that background. Instead of leaving it plain, I thought it'd be fun to stamp on it. I'm putting the pieces back into my stamping tool so I can stamp onto this. Now, I am using a background stamp here. I'll show you how to use other things later in this video. And I'm stamping with an ink that is slightly darker than what we already have. So at the top there, I'm stamping with like a cherry ink. So it'll show up against that coral background. I'm only putting ink towards the top of the stamp, and then I use a blending brush to kind of blend that ink out on the stamp so I don't have harsh stamped lines. So I'll stamp that onto there, decide I need some more, and I'll continue to add ink until I'm happy with that area. Again, using a blending brush to kind of soften it. I don't want this to be too bold. Another thing you could have done is just clear heat embossed or glitter heat embossed this on that colored background. That would look cool too. Here I'm adding a darker pink towards the center, so we have that pink on pink there. Now I didn't go super dark with this because this is where our sentiment will be and I didn't want it to be too busy. Then for the bottom there, I'm using one of my favorite colors, Plum Punch from Gina K Designs. So now we have like this blended color and blended stamping on top of it. This just adds more interest to the card, but you could skip it if you want to. I do think this really makes the eclipse technique stand out even more, which we're about to do. I've taken these pieces out of my stamping tool and I'm putting glue on the back of them. I like to use liquid adhesive because then I can wiggle it till it's just right. And I'm placing this onto a piece of white cardstock of the same size. This could be a scrap of cardstock, in fact. This is Gina K Connect liquid adhesive and I have it in a fine tip bottle really like the system for adhesive. I highly recommend it. I have it linked below. Okay, now it's time for that fun eclipse technique. We're going to take additional white die cuts of the butterfly and glue them behind our inked and embossed butterfly. So you can see I have a bunch of white die cuts here, gluing three or four of these on the back of these stamped butterflies. This will raise it up, giving it dimension and allowing it to stand out. Also, when you tilt the card, you'll see the side of the white die cuts, which gives a fun eclipse effect. So now I have this big butterfly all layered up. I'm cutting that little bottom off there too, and I can glue it black back in place. Now notice the difference. This one up here has no dimension behind it. It kind of blends into the background, but this one on the bottom stands up and you have that white halo around it. You definitely could skip the dimension if you want to, totally up to you. But by die cutting these butterflies out before we stamped the background, we kept our butterflies nice and crisp. You can see that white image well. And then we have the interest added to the background around it. So I'm adding the white die cuts behind each of our embossed butterflies. So we have that dimension. Next, I'll take our background and trim a little bit off of each side, about an eighth of an inch. This way, when we add it to our card, we'll have a nice white trim, but our butterflies will go up right to the edge of the card. Now we can put glue on the back of this. Again, I like to use liquid adhesive so I can wiggle it till it's straight, and then add it to a four and a quarter by five and a half inch top folding white note card. Then we have the final step for the background, and that is to glue our butterflies in place. One idea is you could glue this in offset. So a little bit of that white opening is showing. So see how it's offset there? You could do that if you wanted to. However, I'm just gluing it right into place. It pops in like a puzzle piece to give us that eclipse look. Once I have them glued in place, I'll put something heavy on it while it dries. I use a countertop sample that a reader sent me, but anything heavy would work. Now for sentiment, I use this Gina K Designs Fluttering Fall Bundle. It's an older set of hers. I really like that grateful layering die, so we'll be using that today. But all of these butterflies included here would work great for this technique too. I really am a big fan of butterflies. I just feel it works for a lot of occasions. So I cut the shadow of the word grateful from white and the word grateful itself from black. And I glued those together and then I'm gluing them right onto the center of our card. 
Now notice the edges of that die cut hit the raised area, but the center hits like no dimension. So I did put a foam square right in the back center just to make sure it doesn't get squashed. It's time for those finishing touches. Notice that these butterflies don't have the little antenna, but there are these little sentiment antenna. I decided not to use those today, but notice that is an option. Instead, I'm just drawing my antenna in with a white gel pen. You can also fill in anywhere that maybe your embossing didn't completely emboss, or you're not really happy with the embossing results that you get. Again, my Versamark ink pad is a little dry, so I am filling in some of those little empty spots with my white gel pen. It's a great way to fix it up. I did finish it off by adding some little um, bubble looking bobbles all over the background. I just like that they add a little bit of shine and pick up the color behind. I did stamp a sentiment that says, "Make you make me so happy on the inside. I'll show you that stamp set in a moment. But check out the eclipse technique. When you tilt it, look at that white little halo around those butterflies. I just think it's a fun way to make your cards stand out. And by doing the heat embossed butterflies die cut and then a different pattern stamped on the background, you really step that card up. I'll show you more variations of this throughout this video. It's a great way to combine different products together. By the way, this is the stamp set where I got the You Make Me Happy. It's the Gina K Designs Lemons and Sunshine. I love the sentiments in here, especially that large Hello Sunshine. But I'll be using uh, these sentiments later in this video too. Since I had everything set up, I'm doing a second card in the same design, but this time I used a stencil on the background instead of a background stamp, just showing you more ways to use your products together. So off screen, I inked up this background and then I white heat embossed the butterflies and I'm using the coordinating dies to cut them out. Same steps as last time. The ink colors I used here are Passionate Pink, Wild Dandelion, and Lucky Clover. Now I'm placing those pieces back together on a stamp and stick mat. Any kind of sticky mat would work here. You could even just tape it temporarily to your work surface. Instead of stamping this time, we're using a stencil. I like to use these sticky mats because notice that it holds the stencil in place as we ink over it. So those edges will be held down and we don't have to worry about it shifting. I'm using uh, Hero Arts Fresh Lawn Ink this time. That is slightly darker than the Lucky Clover that I used to ink the background. If you do not have darker shades of ink, you can just ink really heavy with the same color you did on the background and it will give you that tone on tone look. But here I really wanted it to stand out a bit more. This time I'm using an orange over the center and then we'll use a raspberry color along the bottom. There are many things you could do to this background. You could stamp individual images. You could use a stencil and put glitter paste over it. You could do pretty much anything here before you add those butterflies back in place. All right, now it's time to assemble everything as we did before. I will glue these pieces onto a white solid cardstock piece so that we have a place for our butterflies to land. I then glued additional white die cuts of the butterflies behind each heat embossed butterfly so it would have that stacked dimension. You could even do black cardstock behind them and then the eclipse would have a black halo to it instead of a white. Totally up to you. So once I have everything glued in place, I added the grateful sentiment like I did on the last card and also some little iridescent baubles around it. So this is the same as the last card. I had everything set up, might as well make it, but this time I used a stencil on the background instead of a stamp. And when you tilt the card, you see that little white eclipse around each of those butterflies. All right, time for a different example. This time I'm using the same stamp set, but a different design. This is a much simpler one. Now here I have inked already a white cardstock background. I did that off screen. I use Passionate Pink, uh, Plum Punch, and the denim color from Gina K Designs. I'm inking up that large butterfly and stamping it towards the top center with Versamark ink, and then we'll add white embossing powder and heat set it. Keep in mind you could do softer colors on the background and stamp in black instead if you want, or gold, whatever you want. After heat setting, we'll use the coordinating die to cut it out, and now we can decorate that background. 
Instead of using a stamp or a stencil, I thought it'd be fun to use an embossing folder. This is one of my favorite embossing folders from Gina K Designs. I put a little moisture to my cardstock on the back side of it with a baby wipe. I didn't want to mess up the ink on the front, so I only did that on the back. This will help the cardstock get a better impression. I put it into the embossing folder and ran it through my Spellbinders die cut machine. You can use these embossing folders with whatever machine you have and check out that beautiful texture on that bold color. So now we've done the technique with stamp, stencil, and embossing folders. This time I'm keeping this at five and a half inches tall and cutting about a half inch off of each side. And I'll glue this towards the center of our card in a bit. I'm gluing these pieces onto another piece of white cardstock and trimming the excess off. You could do this directly on your card if you prefer. Next, I have the Gina K Designs Swiss Dot Embossing Folder. I feel like this is the most universal embossing folder of all time. It works with any design card. And I use that on a piece of white cardstock, which I'll glue to the front of a four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card. At the center of that, I'll glue our inked piece. So you'll see those little embossed dots around the sides. And on the bold color, you see that tapestry embossing folder. So lots of texture on this simple card design. All right, now here I have our embossed butterfly with three or four white die cuts glued behind it for that eclipse technique. And I'll pop that in place. The final step here is to add a sentiment. I use the You Make Me Happy from that lemon stamp set I showed you earlier. I white heat embossed that on black cardstock and added that, along with a few of those iridescent baubles on the pattern of the butterflies. So here you see lots of texture. You've got the dots on the white, you've got the tapestry on the bold color, and then our bold butterfly standing out at the center. So this is another fun variation of an eclipse technique. All right, for this card, we're gonna change things up. Instead of using a heat embossed die cut image, we're going to use dies. So this just shows you more ways to do an eclipse technique. Now for this, I'm using some feather dies that I love. I used this stamp set and die set in a video in the past. I'll link to it up here in the top right. These are sold separately. I'm just going to use the butterfly dies for this. I have inked a background with Tranquil Teal, um, Blue Raspberry, and I think it's Fresh Asparagus. And I've let it dry completely. Now I'm using the feathers to cut from the center. So no heat embossing or stamping on this one. I will carefully remove these and leave all those little die cuts in the die so that we can add them back in later. But first, let's change up this background, add some interest to it with a background stamp. I'm using an older background stamp of Gina Kay's. This is the Music Medley. It works great with a lot of different occasions. I'm lining up my background with the pattern and the stamp, and then I will close my Misty upside down to grab that paper, and now we can stamp on it and be sure it's straight. I, this time, am using white pigment ink. Any white pigment ink will work. This will give us a beautiful look on this inked background. Before we stamped or inked darker, this time I'm going softer with the white, and I just think it works really well. At this point, I think I stamped the music pattern upside down, and I thought about making my card upside down so the feathers were kind of falling, but I decided I liked my feathers upright, so please do not note that the music is upside down. I'm really hoping and thinking that the recipient won't notice. All right, so I'm gluing that background onto a piece of white cardstock so we have a backing. And now it's time for the clips technique. Off screen, I had die cut a bunch of feathers from white cardstock. I glued three or four of those together. And now I'm gluing the inked one on top. So that inked one that was stuck in our die, I took that out, gluing it right on top of the stacked white die cuts. This gives a really cool eclipse look. Before I glue that stacked one in place, I just have a regular white die cut here and I'm gluing that in place onto our background. So I'm gonna pop it right in the opening. No dimension to this, it's just one white die cut. This will allow me to pop all of those little colored pieces in place. You could leave these openings white, but I think it's really cool if it has the inked, pe the inked pieces in place. So I put a little glue in the openings of the white die cut, and then I laid my die on top and pushed the color pieces into the glue. You could instead individually inlay each of the pieces. This just happens to be a bit of a time saver. I know die cut inlay can be overwhelming, but I think the results are worth it and it only took a few minutes. 
Having a tool with a sticky end like this pickup stick is very helpful too. Now we can take the stacked feather, the one that has three or four white die cuts with the colorful one on top, and glue that right on top of that single white die cut on our background. And now we have that continuous blue color, stamping only in the background, and that raised eclipse effect. I will then do the same thing for the other feather. All right, now for sentiments on this, I use the Gina K Designs A Little Hello Layering Bundle Set. Now this is one I've used a lot. I love those layering hello dies, but this time I use that small stamp set and use several different sentiments to stamp on strips. This is one of my favorite sets. I will link to a video showing more ideas with it up here on the top right. Now off screen, I stamped three of those sentiments with black ink onto thin white cardstock strips. Behind each of those strips, I glued two additional white die cut strips so that there's dimension to them, so they're strong enough to glue on top of our layered feathers. I'm lining these up centered and evenly spaced on a sticky mat, and then I will take a piece of tape and pick those all up together, flip it over, and put glue on the back of these. I do recommend liquid adhesive here so you can wiggle it and get it just right when you pick this up and place it on your card. The reason I put additional strips of white cardstock behind our sentiment strips is so that when we place them over these feathers, they don't get squashed in the mail. It also allows them to stand up against the busy background. So here is the completed card. I had trimmed that background down to be a little bit smaller so I could put it on a four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note card. Check out how cool the eclipse effect is with this because of all the detail in those dies. And the feathers do stand out because I kept the stamping just around them and kept it nice and clean in the center. I also added some iridescent bobbles here and there for a little bit of shine and just to draw your attention to the center. All right, so there are some fun ways to do the Eclipse technique, combining different products together. If you are interested in what I used, I always link them below in my YouTube description. Also at the end here, I will link to a couple other Eclipse techniques in case you want to uh, explore other options. Thank you for spending this time with me. We'll see you soon. Have a great day.